Okay, everybody. Here we go. It's me, Gregory Manorino. It is Tuesday, June 6, 2023, and this is my pre-market report. People, um, <laughs> this issue that we've been seeing lately with the debt market, it's in our face. It's in our face, in our face. Yet again, what am I talking about? It wouldn't take much to set this time bomb off. That is exactly what the debt market is. It's a ticking time bomb. You know this. I've been telling you for years. It's ticking louder and it's ticking faster. We've seen some incredible moves here lately, not only with, with the entire yield curve here in the United States here, which is the most inverted that we've ever seen in history, but global bond yields are like all over the place. Uh, here this morning, you got bonds selling off yet again, and this knee jerk into the dollar, um, its relative strength is higher. Stock futures are lower this morning here after yesterday's, I don't want to say sell off, but the market did finish lower. Um, clearly, clearly, people, this is a sign of instability here in the debt market. It is, it's a big issue. It's the biggest issue facing the financial system and the economy around the world as a whole, period. And and when this thing goes off, it's going to go off. I don't know when it's going to go off. I don't even think about it too much. But when it does, forget about it. It's going to change everything. Uh, credit freeze, the, in a, uh, the whole system is going to lock up. This is, I think, part of the reason why these major institutions, the banks here, are seeing massive, don't take my word for this, please, massive capital outflows, more so than we've seen in 40 years. It's interesting how this played out. Let's put this together. Regional banks here uh, in, in a lot of trouble, and this is just getting started. You and I knew about this from at least nine to 10 months ago, where we discussed here in this blog, no deposits, no loans, and no deals. They're trying to consolidate the banking system here, uh, in an attempt to keep the major institutions from failing themselves, but they're going to fail. There's going to be at least one, maybe two, maybe three failures here. We covered this yesterday here. Massive capital outflows, which I discussed actually Sunday. Derivative exposure like we've never seen before in the history of the world. People pulling their cash out of these institutions. So something is going on here. Um, the setup here what the Fed was trying to do, along with the major institutions, get rid of the smaller ones, consolidate the system into the larger institutions. But <laughs> these institutions here are in a lot of trouble. Again, without inflows of capital, there's, there's going to be a major problem here. And who knows, this could start a domino effect and wipe out the financial system the way that in its current form. Okay, so... Um, there's something going on with regard to that, just with the banking issues here and, and outflows. Uh, and it's not stopping, okay? It's not getting the coverage that it should be. I mean, the mainstream did cover this to a certain degree, but it's not stopping. Capital outflows continue. You got this issue in the debt market, clearly a sign of instability. Hold on a minute. I've got sun on my face again. Um, you, you understand? So you and I, are, we're prepared. We know what's going on here. Um, we have become our own central banks. Those of you that follow this blog, you're, you're holding hard assets, gold and silver. You can't be in a better spot here. I understand the games that they're playing with gold and silver. Let them play their game. We're going to play ours. There's no way they can continue to balloon global debt, not just here in the United States. Now we have a promise to borrow trillions of dollars more into existence right out of the Federal Reserve, who's probably spraying their shorts and panties all over the place. The fact that we're going to be allowing them to continue to inflate, as you know, that is the number one goal of every single central bank. And our loving, caring politicians falling right in line as they're supposed to, because again, we, you and I, have zero representation, none. We have no voice, nothing matters anymore, but you know that. Okay, so that's the story this morning. And it's been the story for a while, but, but something's going to break, something's going to give, there's just no doubt in my mind whatsoever. What's the Fed going to do? They're going to get in here and start buying more debt? Probably. But that's massively inflationary. Again, 
The Fed has no magical powers. They don't. They're not like uh, uh, I don't know some supernatural entity. They have to when they say they're going to keep rates suppressed. The kid, the kid just say it and it happens. You know, just by by some magical spell. No, they have to get the cash. They have to make it and buy the debt. Do you understand? This is something that's not explained. I think at all or by our politicians, or maybe they don't even understand it, or by the mainstream propaganda ministries. I think you all know that. Anyway, so let's move forward. As I said, stock futures are lower. Problem here in the debt market clearly unstable. Unstable. Um, this knee-jerk hiring of the dollar. Crude oil this morning I had a. It's down about two percent pre-market, but we've had a hell of a run-up. Why is crude oil lower right now? Maybe some profit taking. Okay, I got that, but. Uh, it's again the talk of this global economic picture, which is frankly going down the toilet, not just here in the United States, but around the world. You all know this. It's no secret. So crude oil under pressure. Gold and silver slightly, slightly higher this morning. Now, cryptocurrencies under pressure right now. The SEC, the so-called powers that be, uh, are going out of their way to attack the uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. This should tell you something. You understand? Um, let's let's just briefly again touch on the crypto market. Its market cap is half the size. This entire market cap is half the size of one Dow component. It's kind of a niche market. Very few people hold this stuff. But meanwhile, they're so afraid of it, the powers that be, that they're trying to. I guess undo it. They're not going to, in my view. I think it's impossible. Um, but this really should raise your eyebrows a little bit. That again, the, the central banks here—they control the financial system. They don't want any competition. I get that. We are going to have a new system, completely digital, fiat, um, being rolled out by the Federal Reserve relatively soon. But it's a totally different thing than cryptocurrency in its current form. Cryptocurrencies in the current form, people don't transact in it. It shouldn't, maybe cryptocurrency shouldn't be, it, it, it's the term doesn't fit. People buy this stuff, like myself, and hold it. You understand? They don't transact in it. Have I transacted in it? Yes, I have. Uh, admittedly, I have done that, but very few people have transacted in cryptos. So what the Fed is looking to do with their new system is, uh, uh, release a currency, okay, that can be transacted in, not like the current system of cryptocurrency, which are people that hold it. So there's really no competition. But at the same time, they're so fearful of it that, again, the exchanges are under attack. That, like I said, that should tell you something. Kind of like gold and silver under attack as well here. We understand the game. We know JP Morgan owning 53% of of the paper contracts here they control where it goes unfortunately and no one's want to do a damn thing about it but that's just the way it's going to be so um we got another piece of information here from citigroup they're warning of a tech sell-off um citigroup is saying that the tech sector has had uh a little bit of an extended run here and they're expecting a drop if that does happen it would pull the broader market down with it uh, we just heard from who Morgan Stanley yesterday talking about a 16% drop in the stock market nothing major here okay the real crash okay is gonna begin and end in the debt market you all know that I don't like what we're seeing here the MMRI Manorino market risk indicator free to you Free to me, free to everybody. Link in the description of this video is at 240, over 240. We are 10 lovely basis points, less than 10, uh, from that first line in the sand of 250. So keep your eyes on this, okay? And we'll see how that plays out. Anyway, so that's the story this morning. We covered a lot, people. And as I've said, let them do what they got to do because... You and I are so far ahead of the curve on all of this stuff. It's just frankly unbelievable. Now, real quick, just most of you know, I did take up another short position against the S&P 500 just the other day. This market is going to open lower. Um, I may pull profit here for those of you that um, decided to follow my lead on that. We'll see. All right. Um, anyway, 
I will, if, if anything does happen with my trade, I will, of course, send this out in my newsletter, free to you, free to everybody, link in the description of this video. If you don't subscribe to my newsletter, please do. Uh, it's free, and I want you to take advantage of that. Speaking of that, my chat room on my website, traderschoice.net, link below, I opened up more uh, space in my chat room. I don't know if the space is filled up again. So uh, I pay for this. So please take advantage of it. If you feel like you know checking out the chat room, I hope there's spaces there. I did this last night. Go check out my chat room. Again, link in the description of this video. Scroll down to the chat room. Get your spot before someone else does. All right, take advantage of these things, people. I got your back, and you have mine. I know that. All right, that's it, people. I will see all of you later, 1.05 p.m. Pacific time. Please share the video. Please comment. Those thumbs up are very valuable. Gets the video out there. Love you from the heart. I mean that, and I will see you later.